It's quick our talk time, episode 27, Mikkel Kuss speaking. And today we're going to talk about building confidence, building confidence in the branch of concept art specifically. Please do keep in mind that everything that we share here on our YouTube channel is separate from our advanced teachings at Focal Point School. But it is, of course, our yearning intention and desire to provide you with some pointers that might help you out on your own concept art journey. Also, keep in mind that if you are signed up for one of the classes or full terms, then we do advise that you watch these as they are working as a nice framework and they might help you with the mindset of coming into our class. Not a must, but I think it is helpful as it will have a more efficient learning experience. That being said, I would like to cover here some pointers that are connected, I think, to a vast array of professions. Building confidence is not, of course, only applicable to concept art. I think I'm a strong believer that having confidence in everything you do increases the chances of yielding better results. Without being arrogant, of course, I think there is a very, very stark difference between arrogance and confidence. So let's start. I have, again, like I said, some pointers that cover the overall things that might be applicable to other professions and your overall mindset in life. And then there will be pointers that are specifically connected to concept art and or illustration. I think when you want to start with building your confidence, start simple. So something about this work, you are seeing some trees taking shape. It's a pre-recorded demo that I did already. Whoa, that was that. This one is from 2019. And why trees and why something that is, you know, not challenging? Well, because we are here teaching the students one topic at a time. It is not an amazing epic landscape. Just focus on the beauty within that is found in this limited kind of picture that you see on the right. It's a photo that I took in a forest in Holland. And I'm just trying to find the beauty in that without overwhelming myself too much. Right? Once you give yourself tasks that are achievable, and not too overwhelming and you build a track record that you can do it one time second time third time four five five six then you are building a foundation of increasing the chance of having more difficult stuff that you might be able to tackle so i think starting off simple is very important because imagine if you know you just walk into a new class and the teacher you know just jumps right at giving you an industry standard, super difficult design task. Well, the probability of you achieving um, is very, very low. And that might, you know, emotionally scare you a little bit and you might have the opposite effect. Our brain, I think, works in such a way that once you achieve something, even if it's simple and you are able to repeat it, maybe it's, you know, the same type of task, not necessarily the same, then you're building a track record and you're proving it to your own brain, to your own conscious that you are able to tackle problems, right? And then with time, you're able to increase it. So start off simple. I know the urge to really make the most amazing artwork, right? And we talked about it before. But start off simple and you know that this is just like one pinnacle, like one aspect of doing these kinds of simple works. There is a whole ton of other aspects why we're doing this in school. And well, again, we're covering that extensively. Uh, tasks that require minimum decision making, right? So for example, here you see an on-site example that my decision making is here fairly limited. I'm not deciding about the design. I'm not deciding much about the composition. I'm not deciding much about what colors the tree should be. Everything is being captured from, extracted from the picture. And I'm reinterpreting that. I'm keeping everything simple. Yes, I do exaggerate here with the colors here and there. This is something that I also leave for the class. How to do it, why to do it. But I am working with a very restrict restricted plan and a restricted framework so again i don't overwhelm my decision making 
when you're making a custom design like a piece of architecture that you might be doing in Darex class for example then the amount of decisions that you might have to have is very very large and I think with time a concept artist should not be afraid of making certain decisions designing is decision making and the designing is not easy start off simple where the, desi where, the where the decisions are already made for you so that you again build a track record that will aid you in your confidence building right when you're working with people in a group as concept artists have to do in the industry i think it is very important to be honest if you are being presented with a task that you never handled before i think it is very important that you say right from the get-go what you don't know but don't be afraid to admit it because if you don't say it from the start then i think you might end up in bigger unnecessary trouble if you are like on a meeting with your art director producer and you say all right that sounds very cool i'm very excited to tackle this however i would like to guys let you know that for example i i never did a character design on this kind of level but please give me the guidelines tell me what to do and i'll do everything i can to just do it right and from the get-go first of all you're giving the right impression that hey you know this guy or girl is not afraid of painting him or herself in like kind of a, you know honest lighting scenario and then do your best to achieve it and then you'll have like a double up kind of confidence boost because at first you said ah oh, you know you're not that good at it and then you did everything you could to achieve it and then you have the results on top of it right so i think this is very important so be honest with the people you work with and, uh, and yeah and always mention you know i'm mentioning that because you know i want the project to to flourish right i mean tell me what to do so it can benefit the whole project and the whole team right this is i think crucial um w when you want to contribute to a certain project successfully right for example when you are working for your uh, video game or the next movie or even commercials right concept artists are being hired for you know many many things and so the other thing that is so nicely connected to it is under promise and over deliver so you know just not to contradict myself here because i just said be honest so well if you're under promising you're not you know honest but uh, it comes to that your skills need just to be put into action and then once that action is performed then feel free to start conversations and talk about it often what we experience in the industry and i've been guilty of that myself is that you know because of my excitement i talk about what i am going to do how i'm going to tackle it and i am just overwhelmed and i'm very happy and excited and then well sometimes life happens and then you might not end up delivering what you already talked about with your team and then again that might not be super beneficial so you will have even more to talk about once that job is done so let's say you have to design a set of buildings and a set of architecture for some kind of level level design and you have to design the props within it right instead of talking before you start with the word like yeah oh, i'm going you know for this kind of thing i'm going to photo bash and then here i'm going to use blender in order to have some you know accuracy but you know i'm going to use this like portal and uh, yeah, i'm going to photo scan i'm going to just calm down you know say that you're going to do it of course uh, you'll do your best to you know deliver the best you can don't share everything that you're going to do once the job is done you have results you get other people excited and then share your thoughts what you went through i think that is way more productive and in return again it builds our confidence even better right so once you have that confidence in you and well you're moving forward in your career I think it is very important that you start increasing the difficulty of the tasks, right? You don't want to just draw trees all day long, right? Like in in, uh, in this example over here. Although I do love painting trees, it is uh, it is a form of meditation. But I don't want to get off topic here. Increase the difficulty of the task ahead of you. Uh, so 
Are you able to provide ideas within a set limitation, for example? Are you able to provide functional ideas? Are you even able to draw the same or design the same idea from multiple angles, be it in a 3D model form or just sketching? Set yourself assignments uh, and back check with yourself if you are able to deliver. A good example of that might be is to give yourself, for example, a briefing. Uh, personal projects are amazing for that. Um, I work, for example, often we do a home office with Derek. He's working on his own IP. I'm working on my own IP. And from the get-go, we are not, you know, randomizing our design decisions. No, there is a certain world. There is a certain limitation. There is a certain manufacturing aspect, a certain design language. How many ideas can we provide within that set framework? It's very, very, very difficult, but it will aid you in, well, your overall improvement and having that confidence being boosted because once you end up in a production pipeline, you always work and you always contribute to a world that has already been established. Might not be entirely true when you're starting off with a, with a, with a new IP, However, even when you start up with a new IP, you get a briefing, you get the story, you get sometimes the script. So you are tasked to provide a vast array of ideas within certain limitations. Having that skill for, uh, for a production like a video game or any movie is of extreme importance, right? And of course, last but not least, what I would like to talk about is showcasing confidence in your designs. Uh, well, that goes hand in hand with having strong, a strong foundation. Hence this study again, right? Why, why, why bother painting trees? Why, why, why? Well, we're training here, um, multifaceted things are being tackled here from material definition, lighting, reinterpretation of reality design composition yes even trees have their own design how is the flow of the viewer how are we guiding the viewer with the flow of this particular piece it's set all forth from very simple tasks like this and then all the way we can utilize it forth into the more complex designs right so it starts here with something simple like a tree right just painting reference from a photograph and by enriching yourself, you can apply the same kind of methodology when you are designing more complex things from laser guns to spaceships to architectural pieces, right? So I think it is, uh, again, it's very important uh, pointers that are kind of overall is of course you know start off simple i think that is applicable through a vast array of professions start off simple don't throw yourself into deep waters too soon when you know that you might not have the knowledge start off humble always question whatever you're doing in life ask questions be humble and the confidence will get back into you when you're listening to people assume that you are about to learn something new and me and Derek are doing the same. It's, it's, yes, we are teachers at school and we are confident that we provide vital knowledge, design knowledge, tools knowledge to our students. But sometimes students also know some cool things because, and, and th th that is amazing because we work again like a wolf pack, right? We are together to reach a common goal. And then the specific points are of course, what we talked about right how to act within a set scenario when you're working with other people right admitting to your own weaknesses admitting to that you don't have experience yet but what can you do at this moment to benefit the, uh, the project right well i think that uh, it appears it, it appears that we are running out of time again it uh, you know these 15 minutes are like it's sometimes it flies like an arrow. Nevertheless, I would like to thank you for listening. I hope you know it's, this has been helpful. Like and subscribe if it is of any help to you. Let us know in the comments how you achieve confidence and what you would like to hear next from us. 
Signing off and bye. bye.